how much has Genshin really improved since launch? Is it a reasonable amount of quality of life improvements? Or are quality of life improvements being ignored for the next expansion gimmick? Hello everyone and welcome back to Duglai Gaming. Today I'll be examining the features MiHoYo has added since launch. My theories on why quality of life additions seem to have slowed down for a while. And then I'll explain why I'm hopeful about quality of life features in the future and what features I feel need to be added ASAP along with a few I know will never be added, no matter how many times players ask for them. So let's get started. First off, I feel like I need to explain my definition of quality of life features. They are features that improve the core gameplay experience. Adding brand new things like the Cerna teapot or the TCG don't improve the main game. They are bonus content, but not quality of life content. So some of these updates in the middle of the timeline that I say don't have quality of life updates in them still probably had some gameplay fixes in them. Those fixes during the two point era updates were mostly about the Serena teapot, while three point era updates are a lot of TCG card balancing. There were TCG quality of life improvements added at this time, but I'm not counting those for this list as they're not improving the core game. So with that, here are the major things we didn't have at launch that have greatly improved the Genshin playing experience, vaguely in the order they were released in. Expeditions don't lock away those characters, so you can keep playing as them in the open world, and you can collect and send them out with one button. Weapons can be locked to protect them from being used for enhancement of other weapons. Domain items immediately go to your inventory and don't have to be picked up. You can pick which level up book or weapon item you work towards on Sundays. You got an item at random from all the options before. Event mini game rounds no longer require resin. Resin caps have been increased from 120 and condensed resin exists now. Plus it's been expanded to five condensed resin. You can lower your world level if it gets too hard. Weekly bosses don't cost a full 60 for the first three tries. Four star weapons you get are auto locked so you don't lose them. Daily commissions can now be locked to one region. The artifact strongbox system now exists. Total map pins increase from 99 to 150. The time travel mechanic can loop around to do more than one day. Hangout events out text you've already clicked through before and you can start from any branch not just from the very beginning. Artifacts can be locked at the domain screen when you get them. Birthday mails have a special mailbox now that they can be saved to. The ability to customize the shortcut wheel exists. Soundtrack CDs can be found and played in the teapot. If you back out of a wish menu and re-enter the menu it will keep you on the banner you were last on. It took us until 2.8 to get this. Anyway, you now know if a marker location is underground. Equipped items can now be quickly swapped. The map finally has cave map layers and entrances to caves are marked. Characters with useful talents are automatically selected. World bosses now have a respawn timer. Autofill XP books for characters now exist. Better artifact sorting has been upgraded. Almost loadouts. And not having the achievement increases the chance of getting that daily commission. I didn't even realize we added this one. Why are they not screaming it from the rooftops? Do you know how long I've waited for some Inazuma commissions to drop? Just to loop through the Cat Priestess storyline for the fourth time? It would have been nice to know they added this. And then one that's never mentioned in the timeline, but was added at some point. Pet companions no longer show up in cutscenes when equipped. As you can see, there are a lot of quality of life features at the beginning, only to drop off to one noticeable quality of life addition for all of 3.0 to 3.8. What happened? Region expansions happened. Each large area in Genshin has their own dedicated team. The Sumeru team was already working on that region when Inazuma's team was releasing their islands. The Serena Teapot team is not the same team that's been focusing on the TCG since its launch. So we get features from either of them every update, but those aren't quality of life features for the main game. Fontaine and Nedalyn also have their own teams. Meanwhile, the Chasm team finished and immediately started on Chenyu Vale. Not to mention the poor temporary events team that's expected to make a completely new game from scratch that disappears in six weeks. We don't get overall quality of life updates because everyone is focusing on their own section. Two point era updates included Inazuma focused fixes. The balloon escort daily mission was fixed, but only the Inazuma version. And no other daily commission fixes related to the other regions ever came out because the dedicated Mondstadt team stopped existing after Dragon Dragon Spine, and the Liyue team was working on the Chasm plus 2.4's Lantern Rite that included an expansion of the Liyue Archon questline. Three-point era updates were mostly balancing Dendro in its visual effects or focusing on TCG updates. 3.6 only had three additions and one of those was changing a few enemy icons in the guidebook. Oh. 
and the other was removing the ability to enter photo mode while diving. So as you can see, for a while there, we were getting little to no quality of life improvements, but you can also see how that recently started to change. 4-point era updates have had far more quality of life features than the 3-point era, and we're only halfway through. But why the sudden increase? Around 3.8, MiHoYo seems to have formed a dedicated team to work on quality of life improvements again. Dev Discussions was a post that would come out before each update, around the time of live streams, and explained the quality of life improvements being added that update along with mentioning features they were currently working on. It acknowledged the players' criticisms and reassured them the devs had heard them and were working on it. From December 2021 to January 2023, they went radio silent. You can see the gap in noticeable quality of life features in my timeline is around that time. After 2.0, we barely got any quality of life features. Why? Because they were adding stuff to the teapot instead. 3.0 era updates were even worse, with the devs focusing on optimizing the TCG every update instead. Yes, some quality of life things were added during these times, but they were just mentioned during the live stream. It meant devs weren't mentioning future quality of life features they were working on, so fans had no way to know if their criticisms were being heard. When the dev discussions came back in January 2023, the post was only about TCG fixes, and the next one in February had so few improvements improvements, adding the X button to the weapons enhancement menu screen made the cut. <laughs> They then went quiet again until June 2023, which is when the current wave of quality of life improvements started showing up again. June 2023 was when they announced layered maps being worked on for the 4.0 update. And the next one was the increase of artifact limits and the announcement they were working on an artifact filtering system. They are back to telling us what they are working on. Every update since June has had a dev discussion with it, and each one has added quality of life features people have been screaming for since launch, which is why I wanted to examine this and explain it to everyone. Yes, we have have gotten quality of life features throughout Kenshin's life, but it's also true they went an entire year without any major improvements to the core game. But that doesn't mean they aren't currently trying to fix that. Since 3.8, there's been a team working on fixing the world map, fixing artifact sorting, and daily quests, but it is a lot. So I just ask folks to have patience as they try to roll this stuff out. They are listening again. It just takes time to add the things players are asking for. So they are releasing them in part so you at least get something. But with that, I do want to share some of the quality of life features I hope they are working on. I know nothing of leaks, so these are just things I wish they'd focus on. There is no guarantee any of these will actually happen in the future, but I hope they do. First up, let us teleport directly to ley lines and boss monsters. Star Rail doesn't send you to the nearest waypoint, it sends you right beside the boss fight. I know newer bosses like the crab have a waypoint right beside them now, but for the older bosses like the Geo Bishop or the gosh dang Geo Hypostasis, it would make life so much easier if they could just teleport us right outside the fight area. Proper artifact loadout. I want to hope the 4.4 is them experimenting with different ways to give us artifact loadout and that it's not the final version. They just wanted to give us what they could confidently give us as quickly as possible. I'm sure they'll keep building on what they gave us with 4.4. Shield bar visuals. Players have been asking for this on forums for three years now, and those demands have only gotten louder with the showing up of Star Rail that has shield bars. Wish counter. Just some notification saying how many wishes I've done since my last five star, so I don't have to count through my wish history pages every time I want to know how close to pity I am. The game already knows my pity. Why can't they just show that number to me? List how much friendship XP we need to get a character to the next level. I honestly don't know why this isn't something we have yet. The load bar knows the number. Just show the dang number on the load bar, please. A way to rewatch quest cutscenes in the archive. I understand not being able to store the footage on the mobile version, but they already store the audio of these cutscenes in the gallery. It wouldn't be that hard to have a pre recorded version to watch as an MP4 for PlayStation and PC, especially for the cinematic cutscenes. Let us rewatch those. Increase the AR level past 60. Please, you don't even have to add an increased world level difficulty. Just let me watch the level up bar slowly go up as I do things. Getting 100 Mora means nothing to me at this point. MiHoYo knows how dopamine cycles work. The level up bars make humans feel more accomplished when they complete something. So why cut off the fans that have been the most devoted to you? Again, getting to AR60 takes forever on its own. But making them sit at a full bar for years at this point doesn't encourage them to keep playing the game. I don't even care if adding it now means I've lost the last year of XP. If it just means I can start collecting XP again and feel like I'm working towards something. In the domains, let me swap party members without completely leaving the domain. I don't 
memorize what enemies are in which domain, so usually there's one or two characters I want to swap after running through it once. I shouldn't have to completely leave, reload the open world, and then reload the domain to get to the character swap menu. Just do it at the end. When we're in the character outfits menu, let us use the R1 or L1 bumpers, or I guess tab on PC, to switch to the next character instead of having to leave the outfits menu and go back to it again. It would make customizing wings so much easier. And then one I think only I want, but I feel like it would be cool. Adding character OSTs from their character trailers to the teapot music box, if you have that character. Those OSTs are already compiled into a soundtrack separate from the trailers, and it would be such a cool thing to get with the character. Have it be a reward for getting them to friendship level 7 or something. Get nothing for friendship level 5 to 10. <laughs> But those are the ones I feel it's reasonable to hope they are maybe working on. These next ones are things I repeatedly saw on people's quality of life wish lists, and I honestly think they aren't happening anytime soon, sadly. Increasing resin cap or shorten refill time. Higher ups want you to log in every day for daily traffic numbers. Changing the resin affects that. They aren't gonna increase the cap, I'm sorry. Artifact substat reroll. Same as the resin. If you reroll stats, you aren't rerunning the domains and logging in every day. So they're gonna make you do that gotcha grind for the artifact stats. Cutscene skip button. Again, same reason. It may be a little bit of ego because of believing their cutscene dialogue is so good it's unskippable. Some of it's a little skippable. Trashed artifacts converted to artifact XP item. I really want this one, but I feel like there's an internal reason they've avoided adding it up until now. Hoyo Lab map linked to the game map. Way to know how many chests I have in a certain area. Knowing what chests are where is basically a cheat sheet. And they don't want to put that in the actual game. But please, at least tell me how many chests are left in a region, miHoYo. It would make my life so much easier. Now, just because I'm saying these are unlikely doesn't mean they'll never happen. If one of these does become a feature, I will be happy to be wrong. It probably won't happen. So to wrap this up, they have been giving us a lot of updates over the years, but the quality of life demands list just gets longer with each added region with new features. A new feature will always have areas where it could be improved, and it makes sense for the team to focus on the features they just made instead of going over completely different areas of the code. So the last two years of updates have been focused on the region specific fixes, Serena teapot upgrades, and TCG balancing. Luckily, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it looks like quality of life features are being focused on again. So who knows what features we'll have to discuss by next year. But what features do you hope they add soon? And are there any big ones I missed? Let me know in the comments. And please consider liking and subscribing for more Genshin analysis videos like these. I also have a series going over self-censorship in China and how miHoYo ignores those warnings with reckless abandon. So please consider checking those out next if they sound interesting to you. And I'll see you next time. Bye!